All right, this is serious. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to like mini lad. All right, what's up, guys? My name is Jacques RGQ, and today we're gonna be editing like a uh, whole mini lad here, the Irish man. I don't even really know if he's Irish. I'm just I'm kind of guessing. Quick disclaimer though, before we hop into the video, I cannot cover every single effect he does in every single one of his videos. He has a lot of them, and honestly, he has so many of them, I'm thinking about making a part two, but I'm not sure yet. So for this video, we're gonna be so in this video, we're going to be covering this spin transition. We're going to be covering a slight shake effect. We're also going to be covering whenever Tex is like rotating, but also shaking sort of. We're going to be covering when things get really intense. And then also we're going to make some confetti. So if you find any of these effects helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I cover a lot of content on the channel. It's focused on helping you guys make content the way that you want to make it. First effect is going to be the spin transition. So let's go ahead, hop in premiere, and I'll show you guys what we're getting into today. All right, so I have some rust footage here on the timeline to look at while we're actually editing. But to begin, you're going to go ahead and go to project files down in the bottom left corner of your screen. Right click, go to new item and add in an adjustment layer. Go ahead and make this one uh, 60 frames per second. Hit OK and then drag this onto your timeline. Now, we're not going to need all this. So we can just hit the C key, cut this off and get rid of it. Now, for this effect, it's going to last like 0.16 seconds, which is very short. But there's a way to figure this out to exactly to where you don't have to like do as much guesswork. So what you're going to do is hit your I key, move your play forward a bit and hit your O key. Then you look down in the bottom right hand corner of your preview window and see this time and that's the amount of time between your in and your out and for this effect so we can line it up perfectly i'm going to set it at 0 0.08 seconds then basically you're just going to cut down your adjustment layer to be that size get rid of these extra bits and then hold down your alt key left click on your adjustment layer and duplicate it then you have a perfect 0.16 seconds of transition basically that you're going to use and then you're going to grab these and then line them up where your two clips are meeting and we're just going to drag these up a little bit then hold down your alt key left click and then drag it down so you can make a duplicate and then drag this out so now we have our 2.08 second uh, adjustment layers and then our one 0 0.16 second adjustment layer and yes this is kind of annoying but trust me it's a lot easier to use these just to line it up now we're going to do one more duplicate we're going to duplicate this bottom adjustment layer because we're going to need both of them and whenever you have this transition done let's say if you needed to move it or duplicate it all you have to do is just move it around and then when you finally find the place you want to put this transition this cut in the middle here will auto lock where your cut on your two clips is so then it's a lot easier just to move around and duplicate basically but to actually add effects on we're going to go to the effects in the top right and look for an effect called replicate we're going to drag and drop that onto the bottom adjustment layer and then we're going to look for another effect called mirror and then you're going to add four of these down to that bottom adjustment layer next you're going to look for an effect called transform and then drag that onto that middle adjustment layer we're going to start off by editing this bottom adjustment layer so left click on it go to the effects controls in your top left corner of your screen scroll down a bit and then under replicate you're going to want to change your count to three that'll give us that three by three video square that we need now all these mirror values are going to be kind of annoying but i'm going to put them on screen here so you can plug them in and basically for each one of these mirror effects you're going to want to have each one of these values so basically i'm going to give you the reflection center x and y value and then under that it's going to be the reflection angle degree value and once you plug all those values in your effects control should look like this so you have something to check your work against next we're going to be going to our middle adjustment layer where we have that transform we're going to go to the effects controls and scroll down a little bit we're going to change our scale to three and that'll zoom us in on that middle video square next for this transition we're going to be messing with rotation so move your play head all the way to beginning hit the stopwatch next to rotation then move your play head all the way to the end and then hit your add keyframe tool to add another zero keyframe at the very end now what i like to do is go down to the timeline grab my playhead and basically move it to where this clip cuts Next, I'm going to add a keyframe in for negative 90. Then I'm going to use my arrow keys on my keyboard to move over one frame to the left and add another keyframe for 90. Next, hit this arrow next to rotation to bring down this drop down menu. Now, what I like to do is hold down my shift key, click all of these keyframes, and then go ahead, right click, and then go to continuous bezier. Next, what you're going to do is click on this keyframe, and you're going to want to adjust these lines essentially to where it's roughly like pointing down pretty sharply here, and then do the same with this right keyframe, except that you're going to be pointing it up basically. And then you're going to grab this far left keyframe drag it as far out into the right as possible and then do the same with this uh, far right keyframe we're gonna have to move it in just here to adjust it drag the circle as far left and as far in as possible and try to keep it roughly about here where this line is looking pretty straight and maybe has a little bit of a curve downward then move it back and this should be your transition then close this arrow next to rotation scroll down a little bit more and then hit this box that says use composition shutter angle and then add the shutter angle value of 180. and then here you go here's the spin transition we just did the hardest part is that like that bottom adjustment layer that has all those mirrors but it's whatever you just kind of have to do it or you'll get some like black bars around the edge and then it's not going to look as clean and then you don't you don't you want to look clean you really want to look clean next we had this like slight shake going on not too difficult just some keyframing that's going to be a little annoying but trust me we got this so to do this effect go ahead and grab an adjustment layer out of your project files move it on top of this and then drag this adjustment layer to where it's lining up with your clip 
Next, go to effects in the top right hand corner of your screen and look for our friend transform that we use for literally just about everything. Drag it onto that adjustment layer. Then we're gonna scroll down a bit. So this for this effect, we're gonna be editing three different variables. We're gonna be editing position, scale, and rotation. So hit the stopwatch next to all of those. Now scale is gonna be easy. We're just gonna change its initial value to 110. Drag our playhead to the very end and then change our value to 120. And that's all you have to do for scale. Now for position rotation, it's a little bit different of a story, but trust me, we got this. So you wanna move your playhead forward a little bit, just past the initial keyframes. You're gonna put in a position value of 965 and keep our Y value at 140. Then go down to rotation and change it to one. Then you're gonna play, move your playhead forward a little bit more. And then you're gonna change your X value to 955 and then change your rotation to negative one. Move your playhead forward again, set your X value to 965, and then your Y value to 550. Then make the rotation one, then move your playhead forward one more time. Give your position an X value of 955 and a Y value of 530. Lastly, go down here, change rotation to negative one. Now, how you wanna think about this is we essentially made two groups of keyframes. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is alternate these two keyframes for as long as your effect's going on. So in our case, we don't have too much room, but what we're gonna do is left click, drag over these keyframes, hold your Alt key, left click and drag over. Then grab the second group of keyframes, do the same thing and duplicate them over. And like I said, you're gonna do this as long as you want your effect to be going on, but mine's not too bad. Then you're gonna left click, grab all of these keyframes then right click and then go to Templar Interpolation and go to Continuous Bezier. And essentially what this will do is give you that shake effect. Now ours is moving a bit slow. I'm all right with that, but if you want it to move a bit quicker, all you have to do is move your keyframes together and then you're set. Lastly, you're gonna scroll down to the bottom of your transform, you hit this box that says use composition shutter angle and then change this value to 150. That'll give us like a very slight motion blur going on with this motion. So here you go, here's our slight shake effect going on. Like I said, you can speed it up if you want, but I think it's fine just how it is. Next we have the shaking rotation text basically. So we're gonna hop in the mirror and get into this one. All right, now I've already got some text here on the timeline, but just go ahead and add whatever text you want to do this with. Go back to the effects in the top right hand corner of your screen and grab our friend transform, move it on top of your text file, then go to the effects controls on the top left, scroll down a little bit, and we're gonna be messing with rotation for this effect for this entire, we're gonna be messing with rotation for this entire effect. So go ahead, move your playhead to the very beginning and then hit the stopwatch next to rotation. And we're gonna want our first value to be a three. Then you're gonna use the arrows on your keyboard, move it to the right one frame and you're gonna want to set a value of negative three. Hit enter. Now what I like to do to save myself a lot of time is I zoom in here because you can see these keyframes have a little bit of space between them. Go ahead and select both of them, right click and hit copy. Then basically I'll just use my arrow keys to move over and then hit control V to paste them. And I'll just do this a couple times and this is how I save a lot of time. <laughs> and then essentially you just do this as long as you want your shake effect to be going on. Lastly, we're gonna do this again. We're gonna hit this use composition shutter angle and we're gonna change it to about 50. All right, and then here you go. Here's that shaking rotational effect going on with the text. Now, if you think this is shaking a little bit too much for you, whenever you're going in to do those values, instead of using three, you can bump it down to like two or one and kind of just adjust it to how you like to have it. But I think three is a pretty good value to use. All right, next, we're gonna be covering this intense effect going on. And guess what? You don't have to do as much work as you think you do. Now for this effect, we've already done part of it. We did that light shake just a minute ago. So all you have to do is copy that adjustment layer over, paste it here, and then you're all good as far as that motion goes. And that's the adjustment layer I've already gone ahead and added to this timeline. But for the next step, we're gonna go ahead and go to the project files on the bottom right, right click, go to new item, and then add in a color mat. We're gonna make this mat 60 frames per second. Go ahead and okay. And it should start in black, but you're gonna have a black uh, color mat you're gonna be messing with. Go ahead and hit okay. And we're gonna change our name to black mat just so we know what we're messing with. Then drag your black mat onto your timeline. Trim it down to whatever your uh, clip length is and then trim off the fat there. Next, you're going to select your black mat, go up to the effects controls in the top left and then grab this Y value and then basically set it to where this bar is at the bottom of the screen there. Then we're going to hold our Alt key, left click on our black mat on our timeline, drag it up and make a duplicate. Then we're going to go to the black mat we just made. Go ahead and change this Y value again, except we're going to make a black bar at the top. You can really adjust these to whatever size you want. It's not a big deal either way. This is almost it, but lastly, he has a little bit of color correction going on and this is where you have a little bit more freedom with what you want to do but what i like to do is go ahead and select this bottom adjustment layer that we have then go to the lumetri color on the right side of your screen here and then all we're going to be really changing is a few effects here under the white balance and tone we're going to change our exposure up just a hair contrast up just a hair and same thing with highlights roughly about the same value then what i like to do is add a little bit of the blue in and the temperature and then add a hair bit of magenta and to me this gives a good like an intense effect but if you want to change yours this is like i said where you have a lot of freedom with your intense effect of how you want to do it this is how i like to do it and then here you go, here's that like intense effect we have. And it's a lot easier, like I said, because we already made the shake effects and we just copied it over. All right, lastly, we're gonna be covering this like confetti dude, but he's got a couple other effects here that I'm gonna cover. And guess what? 
We've already made a couple of these too. In this effect, he's got that text rotation, which we've already made. He's got a shade going on in the background, which we've also already made, except his is a little bit faster. So what do we do? We move those keyframes together, like we said, so we don't have to do the entire effect again. But lastly, he's got like a color mat and also the confetti, but we're gonna cover how to do those two right in here. All right, now I've gone ahead and copied over the text and the shake that we made, but I made a slight adjustment to that shake. I took those keyframes, like I said, and I crunched them down a little bit, added a couple more in, and now we have a faster version of that same shake. So the last couple effects we have to add onto this confetti thing. Uh, I've gone ahead and I've looked up some confetti stock footage on YouTube. And lastly, we're gonna go ahead and go to the project files down on the bottom left, right click, go to new item, add in another color mat. We're gonna go ahead and set this one at 60 frames per second again. Now for this one, you're gonna wanna make it like a gray mat, like a dark gray, roughly around this area. Go ahead and hit it okay, then put this onto your timeline, cut down what you don't need. Then lastly, you're gonna wanna select this color mat, go ahead and go to the effects controls in the top left, go to opacity, go ahead and uncheck the stopwatch so you don't have any animation going on, and then you're gonna wanna change this value to roughly 70. Now you have a lot of liberty with this effect, but I think 70 kind of covers it, like it gives you that gray background, but also not too much in your face. And also one small tip, I uh, did have the adjustment layer on top of the confetti at first. Now if you do that, your confetti is gonna shake. So if you want your confetti to shake like this, go ahead, keep it that way. But if not, make sure to put that confetti on top of the adjustment layer. All right, and then here you go. Here's that confetti effect we just made with also all of our other effects going on. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If so, make sure that like button and subscribe. I cover a lot of content on the channel that's focused on helping you guys make content the way that you want to make it. Also, let me know down in the comments below if there's something else or somebody else you want me to cover in a future video. And until next time, peace. No, no, what do you mean? Don't question it. We're getting no. I can't get in. I can't get in. I can't get in. I just want to get in. Help me. I can't get in. Get in the fucking